been a trying season for UNLV coach Jerry Tarkanian with numerous players, injuries, and suspensions. But through it all, the running Rebels have always picked up the pieces. A task made much easier by the inside strength and power of forward Larry Johnson. Johnson leads the Rebel attack in both rebounding and scoring. For UC Santa Barbara's Jerry Pym, senior forward Eric MacArthur leads the Gauchos inside force, which out-rebounds the opposition by more than eight a game. A letter-perfect matchup, UNLV versus UCSB on ESPN. Once again, everyone, and welcome to Big Monday as we continue with our third of three. We'll move it to the Big West. UNLV at UC Santa Barbara. The running Rebels in first place, 14 wins against just one loss. UC Santa Barbara is in third, they're 11 and 5. The running Rebels have won 19 of the last 21 meetings and three in a row. They're also on a 10 game winning streak. We'll get out to UC Santa Barbara in a moment as they will host the running Rebels of UNLV. Is brought to you by your local authorized Porsche dealer and by Bush Beer, the beer with a taste as smooth as its name. The Running Rebels are ranked number two in the nation as they try and wrap up yet another Big West title. They are 14 and one in conference, but they're at UC Santa Barbara. Let's go to Barry Tompkins and Quinn Buckner. Well, thank you, John Sanders, and it wasn't about 10 hours ago that the Running Rebels of Las Vegas woke up as the number two ranked team in America, and what do they get for that? They get to be a three-point underdog tonight in Santa Barbara. Let's take a look at the standings in the Big West Conference, which has become a very tough and a very competitive conference. They have high hopes of sending three teams into the NCAA tournament. UNLV is a lock no matter what happens tonight, no question about it. New Mexico State surprise team in this conference, 14-2, just a half game behind the Running Rebels, and UCSB and Long Beach, they feel one of those two teams is going to go to the tournament. Needless to say, Santa Barbara would have a big leg up if they were to win this one tonight on national television. Hello, everybody. Barry Tompkins along with Quinn Buckner. And Quinn, kind of a mixed blessing, if you will, for the Gauchos. Yes, they get them here at the Thunderdome, and this is a very tough place for a visiting team to play. But they also get the Rebels at their very best. They are really on top of their game right now. Well, they do, Barry. They get the Rebels at their best, but they also know that when they play the Rebels on the 25th of January, they only lost by two points. Points. They've got to feel that their chances are better playing here at home. Larry Johnson is a guy playing in his first year of major college basketball, and yet he has already established himself as a guy who could really take over a basketball game. Well, I like Larry Johnson. He's 6'8", he's about 250, you see averaging 21 points, 11 rebounds, but he comes to play every night. I think that's what you got to have if you want to be a championship caliber the team, and he's a player that can do it for him. But the player that's really given him something to go for here lately is Greg Anthony. Anthony got his uh, jaw broken. He's got it wired and came back and played. There was some question as to whether or not some of the guys wanted to play with Anthony. He's shown the heart to come back and play. He's got that mask on his face. He's played better since he's had that on his face, oddly enough. Yeah, it's simply amazing. And he was a guy that was supposed to miss maybe weeks of the game. He came back to practice the next day after fracturing the jaw. Let's talk about Santa Barbara for a minute. Jerry Pym feels if they're to win tonight, they've got to get a big game out of character heart. And that may be easier said than done because he's playing hurt tonight. Well, his numbers, as you can see there, 16 points. He's second leading scorer on the team, but you're right. He's got a sprained ankle, and I've watched him go through warm-ups. He seems to do all right, but you wonder, after the enthusiasm and the emotion wears off, where will he come after that? But he is the hub of the team. In order for them to be successful, he's absolutely the critical part of the game for them. And a real key, too, of course, is how well they rebound. When they out-rebound their opponents, they win. Well, they do, and this is the guy who's second leading rebounder in the country, Eric McArthur. He's got an extremely long arm, the 7-3 wingspan, and he's only six seven and a half, but his rebounding will be critical, not so much what it does for uh, UCSB, but what it keeps UNLV from doing, and that's running up and down the court. I'll tell you what this game can come down to, which team has the better tape? Anthony, of course, is being held together so that he can breathe through his nose. DeHart is being held together so that he can run. We'll be back. 
do with a thousand dollars cash. The event center in Santa Barbara, and for the introduction of the players and coaches, here's the public address announcer at Santa Barbara, Jim McNamara. Jim? University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and your UC Santa Barbara running gauchos. The starters for the UNLV running Rebels at guard. A six foot one inch sophomore from Detroit, number 12, Anderson Hunt. At guard, a six foot two inch junior from Las Vegas, number 50, Greg Anthony. At center, a six foot ten inch senior from Washington, D.C., double zero, David Butler. Forward, a six foot seven inch junior from Dallas, number four, Larry Johnson. And at forward, a six foot eight inch junior from Pasadena, number 32, Stacy Ogman. The 17th year head coach of the UNLV running Rebels, Jerry Tarkanian. And now, the starting lineups for the running gauchos at guard. A six foot four inch senior from Los Angeles, number 15, Carrick D. Hart. At guard, a six foot three inch freshman from Pasadena, number 32, Idris Jones. At forward, a six foot six inch sophomore from Santa Barbara, number 23, Paul Johnson. Six-foot, nine-inch junior from Granada Hills, number 35, Gary Gray. And at forward, a six-foot, seven-inch senior from South Pasadena, number 55, Eric the Freeze MacArthur. In his seventh year as head coach of the UCSB running Gauchos, Jerry. Running Rebels might not have been the right description there. Those were the walking Rebels on this. <laughs> Let's take a look at the officials in this game. And they could have their work cut out for them. Frank Bassoni with Jim Stupin and Larry Stupin. And the game notes in this one, UNLV is in the midst of a huge run. They have played 11 games in 26 days. That's NBA style. Well, it really is NBA style. Talking to Tark about it, he thought his team has played as well as they've ever played in spite of having so many games in a short period of time. Now, he said they have really gathered and really come together as a team despite a lot of problems both on and off the court. As you can see, Santa Barbara's got a rebound. If they don't, they're in serious trouble. And they got to stick the three. Talking with Jerry Pym this afternoon, he said his team has got to get some transition baskets. They are going to try to beat Las Vegas down the court if they can. But if they don't have a gimme basket and they can't really take it to the hole, they will back it out and play half court. Well, they got to make it a control break, uh, Barry. And the reason that is, if they get down and, and miss the basket, Vegas is just as good going back in the other direction. So defensive transition is going to be very important, more so for Santa Barbara than for Las Vegas. Here's the series record. UNLV 19-2 over the Gauchos, and they've won the last three. But the Gauchos won the two prior to that. So the last five, only a 3-2 edge for Las Vegas. We are set to go. Sellout crowd, and the crowd really is a factor. We mentioned that Santa Barbara's favored in this game by three points. It is clearly because of the crowd here at the Thunderdome. Yeah, I would have to say that'd be part of it, Barry, but the, the two-point loss really didn't hurt uh, the confidence, I'm sure, of Santa Barbara. Now they lost by two in Las Vegas. Nice play by Anthony. But it should be noted that when they did lose in Las Vegas, Butler nor Anthony played. Anderson Hunt. Well, the one thing that you will see in this game for sure, and that'll be great defense, and, and I'll say this at the top, but Las Vegas doesn't get enough credit for the kind of defense they play. They're very aggressive, man-to-man -man defense all over the court. Yeah, I think people have a tendency to think of Las Vegas as an undisciplined team, and they play a very disciplined defensive style of basketball. They, you know what that is, Barry? I think because Las Vegas scores so many points, people assume that they don't try to play defense on the other end. That is not the case. Carrick to Hart with an off-balance jumper. It wouldn't go great. Tried the putback, and it wouldn't go either, and it'll be out of bounds. 
to Las Vegas. One other note on Las Vegas defensively, they're playing a lot more zone this year than they have in the past. Well, you know, the, the tough thing to do is when you have a lot of players in and out, you can't get into a good rhythm in man-to-man -man defense. So Clark is taking the position, let's go a little bit more zone because people can just play it without as much practice. Butler misses the jumper, but the long rebound comes back to Anthony, and he tries a three and misses. And Eric McCarthy with his first rebound. Number two in the country, 13.4 a game. Nice give from McCarthy to play, hammered from behind by Larry Johnson. Interior passing is something that McCarthy is noted for, but that's an outstanding cut right there. And the block is no question about the foul. Just to elaborate a little bit further on what Jerry Pym wants to do. He wants Vegas to play a zone. He would prefer it if they played a zone. And they are much more likely to do that if their big men get in foul trouble. And that has been the case. So Jerry Tarkanian, even though he has been playing a lot more zone, doesn't always do it as a matter of choice. No, I, I would have to agree with that. I think, that given his brothers, that, that Tark would rather play man to man. Uh, the guy that I think can be critical is, is Gary Gray, because one thing that most people don't know, he gets like six or eight rebounds, and, and, and you just don't know how badly he can really hurt you, and that will really help Santa Barbara to get off and push the ball up the court. I think he's a key player, too, because he's one of the guys that's going to have to get up and down the court. There's a good example of pushing it up, but when there was nothing there, they'll play it in the half court. Johnson to the basket, blocked by Ogwood, who gives him an elbow to the neck. Travel. Kind of like Assembly Hall, isn't it? Uh, a little bit. A lot of emotion involved in this game. You see a little bit of early concern by Tarkanian, but he... Clark knows that this is mostly emotional and another minute or two both teams will settle down like boxers early in the fight. You know about that. That's really true. This is kind of a sparring session, the feeling out process. Nice steal by Johnson. Forget it. What a sweet player he is. He really is. He's got great agility. can get up and down the court. Works hard on the board, and, and as we talked about, he's got a body that a linebacker would like that. Looks like Lawrence Taylor in his bill. He really does. Even facially to a certain extent. Johnson gets the baseline, tries the reverse over Butler, and Butler fouled him. I'll tell you, it's pretty physical underneath there, too, right now. It's, it's going to be an aggressive basketball game because both teams know what's at stake. As you said, Vegas is already very well into the NCAA tournament, and UCSB Santa Barbara wants to make sure they get a good shot at it, and I think they've, they've got a very good opportunity and will more than likely be in the tournament. DeHart having trouble getting it inbounds. Finally does to MacArthur. Good look inside, but stepping in front was Anthony. Anderson Hunt. Butler! Taunts the crowd. He's getting himself a cheering section, but I don't think it's one he's going to like. I tell you, the way the Rebels play this game, it defines in your face basketball. MacArthur. Butler at the other end. Nacho's got back very well. defense has been so difficult. You see the, the pass that has mainly been made by Santa Barbara is that one across the top. They catch Las Vegas, packing it in on the inside and just try to swing it over. Eric DeHart 0 for 2 early in this game. A key player averaging 24 plus. MacArthur blocks Butler and Butler reaches in and fouls MacArthur. That's number 2 on Butler. I think David Butler is susceptible to, to the kind of foul he just got. I mean, this is a little bit of a frustration foul. Butler didn't like the idea he lost the ball and just became too aggressive.
Boston when trying to get it back. He's got to learn if you make a mistake, just play your, keep your head, and then get an, the next opportunity. Anthony, you see, with that tape on his face, and that is not so much for the jaw as it is for his nose. He has to breathe through his nose, play with the jumper. with four points. Santa Barbara doing exactly what it wanted, jamming it inside and doing it successfully. Stepping in front was Johnson. And a turnover the other way. Come on, I tell you, that was great anticipation by Anthony. And because what he, he let Johnson run right by him and acted as though he didn't even see him. And when DeHart tried to throw the ball, Anthony was right there in the pass. Some strong defense being played in this game so far. None of the turnovers have been careless turnovers with the exception of Ogden shuffling the pivot foot. Johnson. Anthony all the way to the basket off the glass and in. Tempo at this pace is clearly in Las Vegas' favor. They like to push the ball up and get quick opportunities like most teams, but the reason it's more so in Vegas' favor is because Santa Barbara's field goal percentage defensively is usually around 40%. You can't allow that to happen with the ball being pushed up and down the court. I think Anthony might have taken a shot to the face. We'll look in on it. We'll be back right after this. Greg Anthony went off the court at the beginning of that timeout, went to the locker room, and just ran back onto the court just as the timeout ended. I think maybe they just had to adjust the tape on his nose. We mentioned that the tape on his face has nothing to do with the broken jaw. His jaw is wired shut, but the tape is to keep his nose stable because if anything should happen to his nose, he wouldn't be able to breathe. Well, I thought it was interesting he got back at the end of the timeout. I hope he got what Jerry wants the team to do. Well, he has done everything right since he's been hurt. I'll tell you that. Talk about a gutsy effort. Well, I think it's the, the fact that he came to play immediately after he got hurt, which is the most important thing. Las Vegas has been through such a tough year, difficult year, with all kinds of different adversities. But when you see a player basically get his mouth wired shut and he comes to play, that makes everybody else suck it up some more. Now, I have rarely heard Jerry Tarkanian go into raves about his team, to tell you the truth. He's a guy who usually has tends to get downplay what his team is doing. But he was very complimentary of what his kids have done when we talked to him before the game. Gray with a rebound off the miss. He thinks his team has really come together. Another turnover. Look at Larry Johnson. Race to the basket. He'll wait for help. Hit from behind by Idris Jones. And off the hands of Johnson. Out of bound to the Gachos. Well, you talk about the quickness of Larry Johnson. Watch him right here get this ball, and in his effort to try to get control of it, he pushes it, and then it looks as though he doubles the ball, and the officials, he called double. I'm not sure he did it, but eventually the ball went out of bounds. Four turnovers for each team, here, and most of them have been forced. The hard open for the three. This game over the last six games was 11 of 18 from three-point range and knocks down his first three-point try of the day. Nice pass from Anthony to Butler. Give and go to Hart the jumper. He's feeling pretty good, Barry. He didn't even think about taking that shot. Got pushed a little bit on the back, but carried the heart. Still being the heart of this team. He has really been, he's a streaky shooter to begin with, and he's really been on a run lately. As you mentioned, 25 and a half, 24 and a half points a game over his last six. Foul called on Larry Johnson. His second foul. So Johnson with two and Butler with two. And that could get to be a problem. That's exactly what Jerry Pym wanted. Well, that's what Jerry Pym needs, but there's no question right here. Larry Johnson may be a little bit frustrated at how Gary is playing him down on the block. I don't think the Rebels have done a very good job giving it to Johnson where he's most effective. at 
the other end. And a foul is going to be called, I believe, on Gary Gray. I don't want to tell you, it looks like you made somebody mad here. Larry Johnson just explodes right here. He's almost at the foul line and just powers it to the basket. And it looks as though he got that foul and he's all of a sudden decided, I'm going to show uh, Gary Gray that I'm pretty difficult to play against, so you better come bring it every time down the court. Lucius Davis has come on, replacing Johnson for the Gauchos. Davis has been a big help to Jerry Kim off the bench. Been playing about 18 and a half minutes a game, averaging 10 points per game and five boards in his last eight. You know, you watch the foul shot of Larry Johnson and it's awkward. He'll go up and then he'll stop almost at the top and still have strong enough risk to get the ball in the basket. Them both down. That, that's just what they teach you not to do, and Larry Johnson knocks down two of them. Who's going to argue with him? <laughs> no, I, I know I'm not. <laughs> MacArthur over Johnson. You know, you hear people talk about players who play bigger than they are. I think Eric MacArthur defines that. I don't th think there's any question about that. As I said, the, the wingspan makes him play a lot taller than he is. And the other part that I have to give him credit for, as we see a, a carry in the ball there, call him to heart, is that there's also 39-inch the vertical jump. That helps you play a little bigger than you are, too. Seven foot three inch arm span, 39 and a half inch game. UNLV leading Santa Barbara, 11-39 remaining in the first half. Both teams playing it up-tempo. Well, it, you know, you're playing up-tempo, but you want to see some activity inside on both teams. And right here, you see Butler take it to the basket on, on this end. And that's what UNLV wants to do as much as anything, push the ball inside. You see right now, in the paint, points favorite Vegas is 12 to 8. Butler has eight of those 12. So Butler has been a force offensively. I'm waiting to see Las Vegas take advantage of the fact that Larry Johnson has Gary uh, Gray on him. I've got to believe that Johnson feels he can score on him at will. And did. Yeah, he, he made me look like I knew what I was yeah, talking about with did. that one. Coming the other way, Davis pulls up. Incidentally, Butler out of the game now, replaced by Moses Scurry. Remember, Butler with two fouls, Johnson with two fouls for Vegas. Anderson behind an Augman screen and trying to fight through the screen, Jones fouled it. and I think a well-deserved one. He looked a little bit tired, and, and I have to think that that's part of the reason that he made what I consider a bad foul. If you got Anderson Hunt shooting a shot out in three-point line, don't foul him. Let him shoot the shot. Just get a hand up. You talk about streaky shooters. This man, one of the streakiest in the conference. Came off a 35-point game, had a 10-point game, came back with a 25-point game, and that's the way he is. He had nine three-pointers. You, you get it going on a roll like that, that'll tell you what kind of streaky shooter he is with range. Well, the Rebels perfect at the free-throw line. So far, that's the difference in the game. Three-point lead, Vegas. Down low, Gray couldn't get the handle. Now he does, swatted away by Moses Curry and picked up by Johnson, who backs it up. Oh, it, it's getting brutal. It's tough inside. MacArthur, right up over the top of Johnson, and MacArthur's done that a couple times. But I tell you, both teams really pushing it up the floor. The easy basket is going to be really what makes the difference, either inside or whatever other opportunities you can get off a fast break. But you see the pass go in right into MacArthur. Had a chance to dunk it. Just need to get it in the basket is what he did. Stacy Augment tries and misses. MacArthur the rebound. If you're Santa Barbara, you want Augment shooting that shot. He's not a great shot from outside. MacArthur steps in, leaves it for Gray. Nice pass, but great travel. Gray 
probably didn't know the ball was coming. Exactly. He got surprised because McArthur actually had the shot, but he had it. McArthur had his mind made up to pass it to Gray. That was the second time Gray actually traveled with the ball. Officially caught it. See, getting a little more beef in the game with an A-train, Akers, Julius Akins. Six turnovers for Santa Barbara. Hunt won't go. McCarthy the rebound. Right now, the Gaucho is giving the Rebels one shot. Johnson to the baseline. Stepped on the baseline. Offensive foul, I call it. Pim tries to teach his players, take what the defense given, gives you. That time, Johnson made up his mind and just tried to take it. Augman, one of the better defensive players in the country, was there for the charge. Good ball movement by Vegas, and Augman tried to little scoop, but wouldn't go. And MacArthur has another rebound. Carrick to Hart. In and out. Scurry the rebound for Vegas. They get it up the floor in a hurry. Augment cross court, Hunt open for three. And this time Scurry with good position underneath, rejected by MacArthur, but he fouled it. Well, the one thing we haven't seen a lot of on the part of Nevada Las Vegas is offensive rebound. This time Scurry gets it, and MacArthur gets position, and the official may call that one for a foul. Well, I think I'd have to look a little bit like MacArthur myself. Where pretty, did I get him? Pretty close call, wasn't it? That's another one of those rules that's really born of many vagaries of getting him with the lower part of the body. I could see it with the shoulders and the chest, but if he got him at all, it was with his legs. Well, well as we see Barry Young coming in the game, I think one, where that part rule was called, if we had an opportunity to see it again, there's no question MacArthur put his hand, uh, swung his hand down, and that's, that's a problem. Anytime you do that, the official is subject to call it. You can see Greg Anthony having a little discussion with the official. Interestingly enough, Greg Anthony has his jaw wired shut and has still picked up two technicals in the last three games. <laughs> yeah, you can still make some gestures and, and mumble out some words the officials may not agree with. You'll get a little view of what the fans hear as you see Santa Barbara try to do <laughs> some of the shooters. I saw flashing lights up there. They had signs going, you know, that like in, in kaleidoscope. They do everything to try to distract you up here. And they put those little, you see those wheels up there. I don't know if it's distracting Moses Curry, but it distracted me. <laughs> Got a lane violation. They took that one away. Moses Curry comes back laughing about it. Another turnover, and Santa Barbara cannot afford to make that many turnovers if they hope to have a chance here. Because right now, Vegas isn't shooting it that well. We got a timeout. Jerry Tarkanian wants to talk it over. 8.59 remaining first half. Vegas leads at 21 to 19, and we'll be back for the Thursday presentation of Creative Sports Marketing in association with ESPN. And he used rebroadcast for other transmission of this game without the written consent of Creative Sports Marketing and ESPN is prohibited. Running Rebels by two, 21-19, 8.54 remaining, first half. Game has been played at the Rebels' pace. When they score 83 points or more, they are 18-0, and, and right now we're roughly at that pace. Anthony lobbed it up there, couldn't get it to go, and the rebound, loose ball down to Young, he missed the putback, and finally Carrick DeHart comes away with it and pushes it up the floor. Davis. And that's the kind of lift that Lucy Davis has been given to Gauchos. Coming off the bench, making jump shots, playing good defense. That time he made a good decision to pull up for the jumper. Another big time play. And again, the Gauchos will push it up the floor. DeHart to the basket, foul. Calling on Anderson, I think. It is on Anderson. On this end. That's what Eric MacArthur does best. He comes if he gets somebody else's shot, he can do that because he can hide from the defense. But right here, a little stop and go, stop, go, take it to the basket, take a 
strong, try to get the foul. You can really see the change in character hard over the last couple of years. Remember, he was sort of the second banana to Brian Shaw. Not a bad player here either. I, I have to agree with that. I mean, you, you're playing behind Brian Shaw. You sit there and you try to learn as much as you can, and you don't want to steal too much of his thunder. This year, it's character hard along with Eric McArthur. So, the character hard is taken upon his shoulders to lead the team, and I think he's done a very good job at that. He really has. Even last year, you could see he was tentative in certain situations. Not so this year. Incidentally, Carrick wanted to be remembered to his grandmother, Nancy Theus, back in our Kansas City, Kansas. Yes, it is the same Theus as Reggie Theus, same family, and Carrick will sit. Very much the crowd favorite here in Santa Barbara, as you might expect, first class citizen. Butler. And again, one shot, one shot only. Vegas has not done a very good job, I think, in taking shots, but more importantly, you've got to put a body on Eric Mc, uh, McArthur. And now Vegas again, they push it to the basket, they'll try to take it to the hole, but if it's not there, they kick it back out and play the half court. That's what they're doing now. McArthur works on Butler, and a little short, Ogden doing a good job, McArthur gets the rebound back, he's got a gang of them already. Davis. punch off the bench there. Big punch. Knocking the ball off. Knocking that shot down. But McArthur got it with his long arm. Underneath, Butler missed the jam, but a foul is called on Johnson. MacArthur sits, and he's got eight boards in the first 13 minutes of this game. Well, he's been really active, and as, as important as anything, he's done a very good job of protecting the middle. After we talked about it with about 11 minutes to go in the game, Las Vegas didn't get anything else inside. As you see, Santa Barbara goes to a 1-2-2 matchup zone. Ogden, and he sticks that one. You take your chances with that. First two for Stacy Ogden. I suspect that Jerry Pim, nice play by Ogman on the defensive end, pushes it ahead, foul called, and that's not a bad foul. Well, it, it, it's a good foul. Stacey Ogman would have had to dump, but as I said, he's one of the, he was the defensive player of the year in, in the country last year, and this is where he'll get you. He, he gets his arm out there in the pass. You've got to come meet the ball. If you don't with Stacey Ogman on you, he'll get it eight out of ten times. So a very good foul as... Gaucho is not yet in the penalty. Big lift for that guy, Lucius Davis. Boy, he came in, knocked down three jump shots, played good defense. You need to get those lifts off the bench because in a game as emotional as this, your players get a little more tired because your emotion exacts your strength as well as your physical play. And I'm sure they will bring McCarthy back relatively quickly. Not any foul trouble. That's another real key. When MacArthur has three fouls or less, the Gauchos win. Butler travel. There you see the turnovers, and that is not a result of sloppy play. No, it's actually the result of some very good defense on, on both sides. But as I said, these are two well-schooled teams. Jerry Pilm, I think, has done a, a great job, and I don't think that Jerry Tarkanian gets enough credit for the job he does, particularly on the defensive end. Try to get it down low to Gray. Knocked loose. Anthony, nice pass to Augman to the basket. Knocked away by Jones, and they say foul him. You collapse inside anytime the ball gets there, and you see right here, Vegas pushes the ball up, and then Stacy Augman tries to take it to the basket. The official makes the call. We got some uh, Santa Barbara <laughs> fans behind us that agree with Idris Jones. I think I do too, to tell you the truth. That looked like all ball to me. Six out. Stacy Ogden coming off the 
big game on Saturday. Of course, big game for Stacey Ogden is redundant. Yeah, it is, and, and Las Vegas plays so many tough, top-ranked teams that you get any one of their five starters to have a game like that. But Stacey Ogden can, can get you in a lot of ways. Gray, the turnaround, won't go. Butler, the rebound. Now, all five of the Vegas starters average a double figure. Johnson slipped, but Ogden did well to get it back. Johnson complaining about a wet spot on the floor. Butler underneath, and it won't go. And Jones, the rebound. Character Hart showing no signs of a bad ankle. Just happened yesterday. Bob Oops forgot to take the ball. Three on one now. Augman knocked away by Johnson. What a play and a save nose on the line. You know, they call a foul on Stacy Augman. Yes, he did do a great job. And Augman is a little disappointed. He was trying to throw the lob to Larry Johnson coming on his right. You see Johnson pushing the ball up, and he's free. Nobody got in front of him. You see right here, just a great hand trying to get Johnson the lob, and they call the foul. I think they call an intentional foul, too. Well, I, I don't disagree with that, because the reality is, is, is Augman tried to just to grab back to keep Jones from taking off. So again, a frustration foul. That's a couple that Vegas has had. pretty but it went down you could see Greg Anthony that may be dinner for him that's all he's been able to do of course is drink liquids interestingly enough incidentally the diet that they've been giving him it's a liquid diet but it's the same diet that they give patients who are in a coma high carbohydrate a lot of protein and he really hasn't lost that much weight well, with high carbohydrates, I'm no nutritionist or anything like that. But you, you burn it more cleanly in your system, and he needs the carbohydrates to get up and down the court. At the pace that Las Vegas run, he better get a lot of carbohydrates. Took a real shot right there, too, right to the nose. And what he gets for his efforts is a foul. Boy, showing an awful lot of character. Right there. Well, he would have been fine had he not reached for the basketball. And I'm sure Jerry Tar Tarkanian there on the screen would say one thing. Greg, if you're going to play good defense, we're all for that. But don't reach for the basketball. You get your nose broken. Remember, there is nothing wrong with Greg Anthony's nose. It's his jaw that's the problem. But they have taped the nose and put a little bit of brace on it just because he can only breathe through his nose. And if he were to hurt his nose, he would be in some trouble, needless to say. Thinking more than anything right just then. He had a little bit of the guard just jamming on the nose. How'd you like to be guarding him in a game, though? Must be must sound like you're guarding Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I'd, I'd want to be doing that. I, I give the young man a lot of credit to be out there playing with a jaw wired like that. Absolutely. Because basketball is a non-contact sport, but there's a lot of inadvertent uh, oh, contact that can cause you to get hit, particularly in the facial area. I know you don't believe that it's a non-contact sport. I was a part football player. It didn't make me any different. <laughs> Osmond missed another three-point try. And the Gauchos can increase their lead to five or more. Johnson got underneath, got a man in the air, and couldn't get the shot to go, but drew the foul on Johnson. That is his third personal foul, and that could be a very big moment in this game. The hard does a great job because right now, Johnson was wide open. We didn't get to see it. And you see that he just takes the ball aggressively. Larry Johnson apparently broke the, the line of verticality, if you will. He gets his third the foul. But it was a good find by Character Hart that made that happen. Because Johnson was standing back there waving his hand, still able to get it over Greg Anthony. Now, it's going to be interesting to see how Johnson plays the rest of this game. Because there is a school of thought among some coaches who have coached against Vegas and against Johnson, that when he gets three personal fouls, he has a tendency to get a little bit overcautious. We'll see how he plays when he comes back. He's on the bench now. Well, he can't afford to do that here because, you know, this is seniors' night. The fans have been here since Thursday to get tickets. This is a very big game for Santa Barbara, and if uh, Larry Johnson plays tentatively, it really helps Santa Barbara. I'm sure he won't play, period, for the rest of the half. Nice rebound by Aikens. Can't get it to go. Aikens from the outside position, great rebound, but could not get the putback. And a steal by Carrick to Hart. One on two.
two to Hart. The opportunity shot, it won't go, and Aiken saves it. And is pushed out of bounds. And a foul on Young. No question about that one. You're right, you see right here, uh, Johnson gets the ball. Now the official right in front of him is looking down to see if he's getting, going out of bounds. He didn't really see the foul. The outside official, great teamwork, makes the call. And it was absolutely the right call. So Aikens will go to the free throw line. 64% shooter is just... chances to stretch this lead and have not been able to take advantage. This is a real critical part for him, I think, Barry, because with Larry Johnson out of the game, this is where you want him to, to stretch the lead for Rogalco. Butler is fouled underneath by Davis. Jerry Tarkanian not having the best of it so far. Lucius Davis has had some very good minutes off the bench for Jerry Pym. feels that this is his best Santa Barbara team and that includes the teams that included Brian Shaw and did go to the NCAA tournament. Well he feels that way Barry because the team is, is a lot deeper. He has a, a lot of versatility. He's got some big strong players. He's got the young freshman Eagles Jones that can stick the shot with Wayne. So he's got a lot of different weapons to come at you with. Getting a little oxygen there you see his uh, So we'll take a timeout. 3.57 remaining first half. 28-26, the Gauchos over the running Rebels. We'll be back. And what should be a great game coming your way right here on ESPN tomorrow night, 7.30 Eastern time. The number one ranked Kansas Jayhawks, the number five ranked Oklahoma Sooners at Norman. And then at 9.30, it'll be 15th ranked LSU against Florida, a team, of course, that has been decimated during the course of this year. Notice how much Jack Nicholson sounds like when he tucks. <laughs> yeah, Jack would love that. <laughs> Derek the Hart with his ninth point and a four-point gaucho lead. The one thing that doesn't seem to bother Santa Barbara is, is the pressure in, in, in the regard that they are a very patient team, as you see Anthony, who I mistakenly call Anderson, sitting down. But Santa Barbara is a patient team, so this defense, though it makes you speed up the tempo, doesn't keep Santa Barbara from being patient once they get themselves in position. DeHart got around Anthony, pulled up and stuck another one. Boy, he really did. That was a big time move there to move away from the defense. 11 for Carrick to Hart. He is really on a roll. And there's going to be a foul on Butler, and that is going to be his third. See, that's another one of those frustration fouls. As I said, he's susceptible to things like that. That was a mugging. That wasn't a foul. Watch it on the top of your screen. Well, you see it right there. He, he didn't exactly hit Gary that, Gary that hard, but to some degree he did push him. But he's got to be understand that guys are going to do that to him because he has a temperament to allow himself to be sucked into that kind of foul. That's exactly right. Very emotional player who sometimes does have a tendency to play out of control. And frankly, that's what's happening right now. And the fact remains, it's a close game. Close game, and you have both Johnson and MacArthur sitting out for their respective teams. I really like this player. I, I said this to you once before when I saw him play. That he's a good hard nosed player. He's about 6'8, he's about 235, 240. He's one of those kind of, those kind of players that you, you, you like to have in practice, particularly on the, in the pro level. He'll bang, but he'll just play hard, and he does all the dirty work for you. And he'll be back for another year. Yeah, I started to ask you earlier. I thought he might be a key player just in the fact of can he move up and down the court in the transition game, and he's proving that he can. Butler to the basket. He does some things that make you more aware of him than, than you would like to be. When you become aware of him is after he scored a basket off a rebound when you haven't blocked him out. It popped Johnson open, and Aikens runs it down, and Aikens has done well off the bench. Here's Idris Jones. It won't go. And Anthony, the long rebound, knocked out of bounds, foul on Davis. 
very physical game so far, and a game that really has been as advertised. 2.13 left, two-point game. Halftime will take you back to the studio. John Saunders have all the scores and all the highlights from all around the country. Some interesting games on this big Monday in college basketball. I think when you say a, a, a physical game, I just assume, I would say it's more of a hard-fought game. I mean, I think sometimes we misinterpret physical for being overly aggressive. These teams are just playing hard, and, and you're just going to bump into people sometimes. But if it's, if it's in honest effort, the officials typically don't make a call. Anthony at the free throw line. Six for Greg Anthony. One out of two, and Aikens another rebound. Gotchers have not missed a beat since MacArthur went to the bench. Well, that's, that's my point exactly. Gary Pym just has a lot of weapons, and they, they do what needs to be done. Carrick to Hart in traffic, still six for three. Butler follow up. It's short in the lane. Ogman to put back. If Santa Barbara blocks out the head exactly what you want. You want Butler shooting a fadeaway jump shot because he doesn't allow, have the ability to get back to the basket for the offensive rebound. That time Ogman followed it up. Two point game inside 130 remaining. Idris Jones for three. Yeah, he can warm up. Idris Jones is a long range shooter and he can warm it up. That's seven of them in the game against Utah State. Gary Gray got back very well again on the transition and made the play. Big fella knows he's not in the game to score points. So the best he can do is keep his man from scoring. That time, you're right, did a good job getting back to flex with the ball, knocking it out of bounds off of one of the Vegas players. the turnaround to hard go butler the rebound for the rebels anthony ahead it goes to scurry underneath nice look by greg anthony well, we got about a four second difference here so we're going to see santa barbara just try to get down and get one shot to the end of the half Second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Idris Jones took that a little early and it wouldn't go. Well, I don't think Jerry's going to like that one. No, he won't. That's a little bit of a freshman feeling pretty good. He made his last shot. And Scurry missed the shot. And again, credit Gray with just doing enough. And the Gaucho throw it away. And now the Rebels will have three seconds to get a shot up. Jerry Pilmer's front ball game. The home team, Santa Barbara, leading the visitors from Las Vegas. We'll be back with more hack time activity right after this. This is UC Santa Barbara. is brought to you by the personal computer group of Hewlett Packard. There is a better way. And by Michelob Dry. Bold taste with no aftertaste. Mick Dry refreshes completely. Tompkins with Quinn Buckner. Let's take a look at some of the individual numbers. Butler was an offensive force, but we mentioned this earlier. There were times he played a control first half. Well, he got himself in foul trouble doing it, but you see he has 12 points. Anthony, six. Johnson only has six. I, six. I expect him to come out strong in the second half. Augman, five. Scurry only has three points. Johnson had 21 in the second half of the first meeting in Las Vegas. DeHart, 14 points. He just can't play any better than he's been playing. He really can. I mean, he handled the ball as well as everything else. We said focal of the team got 14 points. MacArthur has six points, but he's got eight rebounds. Davis got big lift off the bench with six. Johnson five. Jones with three. Let's take a look at the storyline in this game then. UNLV, as you see, only 43% from the field. Normally they'll shoot it better than that. And you touched upon this. Larry Johnson really has not been a factor in the game yet. He, he really never got into the flow, and I think you got to give credit to the overall team defense of the Gaucho 
Eagles, but particularly Gary Gray. And you see Santa Barbara is doing their usual. They're out-rebounding their opponents. If they continue to do that, I think they have a great chance to win this. But I think the big plus for them was the bench support. Davis came off, made a couple hoops for him real big. Uh, Aitken's got some rebounds. These are people you don't normally expect to get production from. Tonight, the Gauchos have gotten it. If they continue to get that kind of production, I think they'll beat Las Vegas. Here's a key player, no question about it. We mentioned he had 21 points in the second half of the two-point win that Vegas had in Las Vegas at the Thomas and Mack Center. Now he's playing with three personal fouls. So is David Butler. On the other side of that coin for Santa Barbara, Eric MacArthur sat the last six minutes of the first half. He's going to be fresh. I just have to think, Quinn, they will try to jam it inside and try to really take it right to Johnson and Butler. Well, I would, too, definitely try to do it. You see Augman go to the basket. The real key is, is for us to watch to see whether or not Larry Johnson stays aggressive or becomes tentative because he does have three fouls. And the other factor, of course, is we'll watch for Vegas to possibly zone a little bit more, and that'll open up the three-point shot. Turn around MacArthur, too hard. Nice block out that time and a rebound Johnson. I've seen Las Vegas teams going down at halftime and it'll focus them all of a sudden. They come out and then they become very, very workmanlike. Rejection by MacArthur, his third. And he's doing it against a pretty good player. Uh, that's what I was going to say. It was great for the rejection, but it's who he rejected. Larry Johnson. And a three at the other end by the other Johnson. There's the lob to Johnson underneath, and it's Johnson and Johnson. That time, Butler got the ball, a little bit of high-low action. I'm sure that's what, what Tark wants to happen. Johnson is a very difficult player. As, as, good, as much as I like Gray, I think he'll have a tough time guarding Larry Johnson. To Hart, to MacArthur, to the basket. Officials. That was a warning. Ball came through the basket, and Eric McArthur grabbed the ball, and the official gave both sides a warning. Next, next time, it's a technical for either team. There's a lob from Johnson to Butler, overplayed beautifully by McArthur. Got to expose McArthur to the fouls because he, Santa Barbara is really at a disadvantage. As you see, again, the high-low. This time, Johnson is the man up high, throwing it down to Butler, but the long arms of McArthur deflects it out of bounds. Great anticipation by McArthur. Anderson Hunt for three is short. McArthur the rebound. Boy, uh, McArthur really quick off the floor. Gary Gray can't get it. McArthur the foul to start the second half for Eric McArthur. Another turnover, threw it right to Idris Jones. Three-pointer by Jones, won't go. McArthur, the offensive rebound. Drive the put back to the foul. If it's against Johnson, it's his fourth. We'll see. It is against Johnson, number four. Things going from bad to worse for this man. And you see just an incredulous look on Jerry Tarkanian trying to figure out what's wrong as Larry Johnson protests vigorously about the call. You see a little shot right here, but you see coming in to tip it in is McArthur. That's his real strength right there, getting offensive rebound basket. Now we got a real situation for Jerry Tarkanian because he's got to get Larry Johnson out of the game. He's got four fouls, and you can't afford to play down the stretch without having your, number, your star player, Larry Johnson. Rosa Scurry will come on for Johnson. MacArthur's quickness continues to dazzle him. MacArthur has is, got is quickness. He's got long arm, but he's got a nose for the ball. It, he studies it coming off the rim, and that's what you have to do. Paul Silas, all of the great rebounders do that. They study the ball off the rim knowing that if it's shot on the right side, nine times out of ten, it comes off the left side. And after you do this as, as, as an art, then all of a sudden when it goes up, you have a good idea where it's coming off. MacArthur definitely seems to have that. Not a bad line for MacArthur, 12 points, 10 boards. And we haven't yet played two and a half minutes of the second half. This is the biggest lead for Santa Barbara. It's eight. Augman answers at the other end. Got 
to be careful picking up your dribbles against the, the Rebels because what they will do is just shut off the pass, try to get a five-second call on the man with the ball. That was an example of a little bit of a lazy pass by Johnson. Well, that's what I was talking about. What you do is you have to watch Las Vegas because as soon as the player picks up his pass, now watch all of a sudden the pass is picked up and you see the overplay just come right away. Good job that time, Hunt getting his hand on the ball. They just kind of lull you to sleep with that defense, and then they just dart out, explode out with good quickness. Powell's going to be called on Johnson, reaching in. I think they're going to say that's before the shot. I don't know. Well, I know Johnson was definitely refereeing there, trying to get the official to call it on the ground. You see, coming back to this side, good penetration always breaks down the defense. No question that Johnson pushed Butler before the shot. Penetration of Anderson Hunt is what made all of that happen. Davis comes back for Santa Barbara, replacing Johnson. They're going high-low here. They don't contest Ogman a great deal outside. Hunt tries the three, it won't go. Long rebound run down by Davis. With good reason. Now, Stacey Ogman is a great defensive player. Hadn't concentrated as much on the offensive end. Therefore, he's one of the people, percentages say, take a chance with him. Down low, Gary Gray was wide open, but a foul is going to be called. I think it's on Gray pushing off. Look left of your screen. You see that Gray tries to get position in his efforts to go get the ball. The official felt that he was a little too pushed off a little bit. Gave him a, a good call, I think, on the foul. And McCarthy will sit again. They have brought Aikens back. Gives him a little bit more bulk. Gives him a little bulk. It also gives MacArthur a break. That way he can avoid his fourth foul, particularly from being tired, as you see Anthony knocked down that jumper. Anthony with a three. That's only the second three for Las Vegas. They're two of nine now. And it's back to a three-point game. Don't go away. Idris Jones for three, short. And a rebound to Butler, one shot now only for the Gaucho. And a long shot it is, and you, you don't need to take the long shot because that usually translates to long rebounds and fast break opportunities. Another turnover, Idris Jones, and it is run down as Jones couldn't find the handle. And here come the Rebels, Augman for three, no. Up. He's not going to take that. <laughs> the fans were sure hoping he would take it. Down low this time to Aikens. Can't get it. Gets it back and puts it in. <laughs> Moses Scurry, a nice move to put it on the floor. Somebody forgot about him defensively for a minute. part of his team thus far. They've come out and played very well. I think they've been able again. As I said, they've gotten good play off the bench. Aikens, even though he got that foul, got the basket on the other end. That's a, you've got to have that against a team like Las Vegas. They're not rated number two for, for nothing. They've gone through a lot of tough things, been able to withstand that. I suspect that they feel that their chances here are, are equally as good as them being number two in the country. Now, this is a great basketball team. There's no question about it. Remember, too, they have played 11 games in the last 26 days. Two for Moses Curry. That's better than he usually does. MacArthur is back in the game now, playing with three fouls for the Gauchos. Nice pick by MacArthur. Try to get it down low to MacArthur, and it's rejected, but a foul is called on Butler, and that is four on David Butler. That really puts Stark in a bit of dilemma now. This is an outstanding pass, high-low bounce pass, and coming up with it is McArthur, and he tries to go backwards. And you see Butler come over to get the try for the block. I, I'll kind of let you call this one for yourself. 
One of those either way calls. Now they say that's his third. I we'll go with what the official numbers are, although I, I was certain that he had three in the first half. Well, you see Eric McArthur is having a big night. He's got 12 points, 11 rebounds, as you see there. But really critical, critical has been his defense. He's got three blocks, and that keeps all of the Rebels from running in there trying to get those easy jumps. 14-32 remaining in the game. 51-46, Santa Barbara. Tonight right here on ESPN, 7.30 Eastern Time. In Norman, Oklahoma, it'll be the Kansas Jayhawks, number one in the country against the number five-ranked Oklahoma Sooners. And then we'll move on to the Southeast Conference, number 15, LSU, against Florida. Florida, of course, has been struggling a great deal. Well, uh, the, the Kansas-Oklahoma game is, is going to be a great one. Oklahoma proven they can beat teams in the Big 8. They've already beaten Missouri, so they've got them down at Norman. Kansas got their hands full. But I've seen Kansas play, and they're teams that can get it done even on the road. Great conference this year, the Big 8 Conference. Another turnover. Incidentally, it is official. Butler does have three personal fouls, and not four. Again, a lazy pass, but it is taken back from Ogman by Davis to Aikens. Not a very good job stepping in to keep Davis from getting, Aikens getting to the basket. Anthony, tough shot, counted. And he'll go to the line. Aikens the foul. Just the quickness of Anthony gets him open a little step inside. And, and you see Aikens gets there and he bodies up. Moses Scurry gave him a great pick that time, too. Jerry Tarkanian is going to take a calculated risk here and come back with Johnson, who is playing with four personal fouls. Well, I, I think one of the things you do is you take your player like Larry Johnson out of the game because sometimes an official, and they don't do it intentionally, if they call a foul on the kid, they, they pay particular attention to him. Jerry Tarkanian wisely getting Johnson out of the game so he doesn't get a frustration foul. Now he puts him back in the game and hopes that he can get Johnson back on track. Like the heart almost forgot the basketball there. In the lane, and a beautiful shot by Lucius Davis, off balance, never really had a handle on the ball. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to call it what it is. That was luck. First of all, the pass shouldn't have got there by McArthur. And the second, for Davis to even control it and get it in was pretty amazing. Gauchos by six. Jumper by Anthony Wolf goes to Hart, runs the rebound down, and Anthony fouls it. Now watch, you tell me how Johnson is playing on a defensive end. Remember, he's got four fouls. Watch it. Well, he, he gets down here. He, he just takes good position. That's what he did the last time. I'm, I'm not going to call that, that tentative. The thing you need to do is to, to just get yourself in good position. I thought Larry Johnson did that. Lucius Davis has come off the bench for the Gachos and made all four of the shots that he's taken, and they've gotten help from Aikens with four rebounds and four points. Long way to go in this one. 12 minutes, 58 seconds, 55-49. Let's look at Jerry Pim. defense forced that one. They look inside. Davis follows Johnson from behind. See Tark there with that ever-present worried look on his face. He does. <laughs> he gets up in the morning worried. <laughs> That's a difference in, in these two coaches. There is such a marked contrast. It's really interesting. leaves it and MacArthur took a real shot that time. I think it just took a shot to the ribs. Well, let's hope 
this city wins. You see Anderson, again, taking the ball to the basket. You see stepping over and trying to get there. And just getting caught in between the pick is uh, Eric McArthur. He got a good shot. He appears to be okay. That can be deceiving. <laughs> Anthony misses badly. McArthur's there for the rebound. by DeHart. Good look in by Davis to McCarthy, a little bit short. Johnson a rebound for Vegas. I'll tell you what, the tempo defensively is definitely favoring Las Vegas because as I said before, I thought that Santa Barbara got a lucky break and they got another one right there. Auburn just missed the layup, but the pressure is starting to make the passes be thrown out a little bit. The, the offense is moving out. You see Auburn do a little doop to do here. A little too much doop to do. I was just going to say. David Butler gets called for that foul. Now he has four. I think the Duke would have been fine, but it was the C. Do that did him in. 12 <laughs> 5 remaining in the game, and now Jerry Tarkani is saying, no, we're not going to take that timeout. I'm only kidding here. All right, we're just going to play. Well, that's directed traffic there. <laughs> Jerry looked up the clock, so he knows he gets one in three seconds. There's no reason to take a timeout. Well, that, that's a man that's been on TV a number of times that knows the advantage of the timeouts that come with it. Stepping in front again as Jones a little lazy once more with the bounce pass and all the way to the basket at the other end with Stacy Augman. Back to a four-point game, and Augman coming alive with 11 points. Got to be careful with Las Vegas. They're kind of team that all of a sudden will come up and get 10 and 11 points in a row. And that time the streak got broken by the heart, but they'll get a 10 to 2 run, and then all of a sudden they'll slow down and they'll let you pull away, and then they'll get a 15 to 2 run. The Vegas will just kind of lull you to sleep, but they'll always play good defense, so that keeps them in the game. Derek DeHart's first basket of the second half. Hogan misses the lean in. MacArthur, another rebound. MacArthur already at a season's average. Vegas playing some good half-court defense, so. They, and they will. They'll play good defense. They'll make you move the ball around. And if you lose your patience offensively, that's when all of a sudden they'll come up with a steal. That's a tough shot. The heart falling away from about 18 feet. Johnson has the rebound. That's exactly the kind of shot that I'm talking about. The heart lost his patience. You see what Las Vegas gets out of it. Anthony comes the other way. Score the basket. See, when you take those shots like that, first of all, it's out of the rhythm of the offense and you give the defense a chance to get the rebound and no defensive transition allows Las Vegas to get that, that basket off the fast break. Now Jerry Tarkanian will get the timeout with the television timeout. Doesn't even cost it. Santa Barbara by four. Santa Barbara lead, but what's happening right now is the Vegas defensively is forcing Santa Barbara into passing mistakes and then burning it up the other end. Well, that's the style that they like to play. And you see right here, Anderson just pushes the ball up. Good body control gets it in the basket, but that's what the, the kind of turnovers that Vegas likes to get, because then they can beat you, because they have such good athletic players that can dart back to the other end. They hope they get you in defensive transition like short a man or two. I think it's catchy. I just called Greg Anthony Anderson off. <laughs> good find. of the game you don't expect a lot from McArthur board but good cut by DeHart but that's a great pass over the defensive head yeah I really like the intangible things that MacArthur does not that an assist is an intangible but he the aspects of the game other than putting the ball in the hole he really seems to have done an art form I think a great deal of that credit has to go to Jerry Pilm because he, he teaches you to play the game at, at all aspects and to try to develop yourself. I think MacArthur's done that in, since he's been here. Foul from behind on Johnson. 
But the other thing, you play with players like Character Hart, Brian Shaw. You see these guys doing it's like, I mean, I don't mean to say that, that it's Larry Birdish, but it's it magic. It's contagious. When you see those guys do it, you understand all right what they tried to get accomplished and how they did it. So you try it and it works, and you just get more confidence yeah. in yourself in doing it. You know, I, I guess it's another one of those things that I should expect, but for some reason it always surprised me when I hear it's the guys like Larry Bird and Magic Johnson and Michael Jordan who in practice day in and day out are the hardest workers. Well, that's how they got to be where they are, because they understand the value of, of the great work ethic, and they, they understand how good they are. But for a coach, it's a delight, because if you can get those players to work hard, then there's no reason for anybody else not to say, well, I'm going to work hard. Well, if Larry or Magic and, and, and Isaiah and those kids work, everybody else should be putting it on the line. Those are scurry, shooting it from the free throw line pretty well tonight. Four-point game, Vegas will not go away. There's a kick. And that's a gimme. Character Hart lost the ball to Gary Gray standing under the basket for a layup. That's a gimme. Johnson underneath off the glass and in. defense that he plays. And, and an amoeba defense would have to be like a, a, um, a matchup zone because what they do is they, it moves with the offense, keeps a man pointed on the ball. It's just another name for a matchup zone. But I do like the name, <laughs> the amoeba. <laughs> Moving in no particular order. No particular order, no line of reason, just finding the ball and making sure you're staying around it. And the lob, that's the right thing to do against it. All they did was miss the shot, but the put back by Aikens. It's really been a factor in this game. He's been a factor, but one of the reasons he was was that was Johnson under there, and he couldn't afford to get his foul. And then a quick shot on the other end by Hunt. You see the fans into this one now. Okay, lead by six. The biggest lead they've had is an eight. Aikens again, and that was a shot that he threw up from somewhere around the hip. Jump ball call. The position arrow points to the Gauchos. MacArthur, a short rest, will come back. We'll take a timeout. 7.54 remaining in the game. Gaucho 63, Rebels 57. We'll be back. 57, the Thunderdome is alive. 54 left. Watch the play underneath the Aikens. Well, the thing you notice mostly is that David, uh, that uh, Larry Johnson doesn't get involved in the play much at all because he's got four fouls. He just kind of backs away. You see, right in the middle of your screen, right, he's just moving to get away as opposed to get involved in the action. He's got to get involved if his team's going to have a good chance at winning this game. He's, the, he's considered the best player on the team, and I think rightfully so. So he's got to take a chance and just play it, and if the official calls it, he just calls it. Well, we mentioned that earlier when he did get in foul trouble earlier in the game, that there is a school of thought that he gets perhaps a little overcautious when he gets in foul trouble, and that time it did clearly cost him. Gave Aikens a second chance. Johnson behind him, a car through screen. Same thing. Larry Johnson was the last man on defense and just never made an effort to go for the block. Just put his hands up. So Johnson, a liability right now on the defensive end. Butler is back, incidentally, for Vegas. Both Johnson and Butler playing with four fouls. DeHart reaches in and is guilty of the foul. personal foul on character Hart. Aikens leading a few cheers here. Gauchos, needless to say, want to keep the crowd in this game. <laughs> That's a fan for you. Aikens and Johnson lead. Boy, Aikens was a big help off the bench tonight. Well, Aikens has been a big help here in the second half. Well, we talked about it earlier. Lucius Davis was a help in the, in the first half. So the bench support has really been what's kept uh, 
the lead going here for UCSB. They, they, the bench scoring is 12 to 9. But there's the other things there, the intangibles. You know, Aikens has come up with, with some rebounds, which is tangible, but he's, he's kept the ball alive a couple times. Because you see Las Vegas put a full court press on. Crowd wants a foul on Anderson Hunt. They won't get it. And again, a lazy pass by Idris Jones. And a gimme at the other end. No, it's blocked from behind by Davis. He says, I got the ball. But the referee says, no, you did get the ball, but you got the man also. Idris Jones just a little lazy here. Well, that's a good play. I, I just assume say that's a good play by Larry Johnson, who you don't suspect will get out here. And, and as far as I'm concerned, Santa Barbara got away with a break here because, the, because instead of the easy basket, even though Davis didn't think he fouled, now you got Anthony on the foul line trying to make foul shots. Greg Anthony, good free throw shooter. 71%. I guess good is a relative term also. Again, it's a good foul now. It's, it's a great foul. Easy two points now. He's got to make a basket to get one of them. One out of two. 65-60, full court pressure by Vegas. They have to hurry to get this in. 2-2-1. Two, two, They're gonna have to hustle. Yeah, he's standing out of bounds. There's no question. Johnson was standing right on the bound, out of bounds, officially right on top of him. Again, Jerry Tarkanian changing the tempo up a little bit. He felt he's been in a half-court defense long enough, hadn't got enough out of it, trying to shake the Gauchos up in a different manner. Gauchos have turned it over 20 times in this game. Those start to be numbers that you have to consider yourself lucky if you win the game. Butler missed the jumper. Johnson has the rebound. Santa Barbara doing a good job. One shot on the rebound. Well, that's been the hallmark of their season. Vegas playing some tenacious defense. <laughs> well, I tell you, they get all over you. McCarthy got a man in the air, putting it off the glass. Butler at the other end, misses, Gray rebounds. Eastern Time, number 10, Syracuse, against the Hall. We'll also have cut-ins all throughout the evening on the UConn-Georgetown game. That should be a great game. Then we'll get out of the ACC at 9 o'clock. It'll be Duke against Clemson. Duke looked awfully good against an awfully good Arizona team yesterday. Then out to the left coast, it'll be Cal and Stanford. We'll be there for that one at 11.30 Eastern Time. A battle in the Big Ten, in the Pac-10, I should say. Well, both in the ACC uh, and the Big East, you're looking at two of the teams going for the championship. Duke and Clemson and George Thomas and Utah. That's one way to beat the price. <laughs> Just throw it down there and hope somebody runs under it. I'll try to utilize a little of the clock now, I think. 
Get it down to McCarthy for the turnaround. Hard off the left side. One shot, the rebound to Butler. You can't afford to get tentative. You know, right now, Santa Barbara has one of those funny leads at the eight. We went from nine to 12 points, and Larry Johnson was just fall out of the game. But when oh, you get those kind of leads, it's a problem. I think they're gonna call that on McCarthy. They call it oh, on McCarthy. Oh, that is a huge gimme. Yeah, it really is, because that, that's a big swing. You see Hunt takes the shot, and you see right in the center of your screen, the ball goes up. Good call. All right, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I bet you if you asked Jerry Film, he wouldn't agree with it. No, I don't think so, but I did think McCarthy jumped into it. So McCarthy will sit, having picked up his fourth personal foul. I suspect that Jerry Pim will sit in for about a minute, minute and a half, and bring him back. Well, it, it, it's, it's bad in one sense that you lose McCarthy, but the other sense is not so bad, and I'll tell you why after the foul shot. Anderson Hunt, incidentally, having a woeful shooting night. He is now 1 for 10 from the floor at 0 for 6 from three-point range. The reason that I don't think it's that bad is because you get an extra ball handler on the court, and with the pressure Las Vegas is, being put, is putting on the Gauchos, they need as many ball handlers as they can get. They get it into Gray, puts it up, fight for the rebound, knocked out of bounds off Johnson's hand. Vegas actually did a good job that time, front and back on Gray. If you think a nine-point lead with 427 is enough, need we remind you that Santa Barbara was down 11 with two and a half minutes to play against Fuller in the last time you and I were in this very building. And the point I was making a moment ago is you can't afford to get tentative because you have this nine-point lead with four minutes to go. You have to continue to, to attack the basket, but within the framework of the offense, it didn't happen that time when you see Las Vegas is now starting to shoot foul shots. Because, I'm sorry, Santa Barbara is, is in the penalty, and that's when it becomes really critical to, to watch yourself in terms of the foul, because that's a, basically a non-shooting foul that looks at it's already in the bonus. Akins was the man who was guilty of the foul on the rebound. Plenty of time left, 418. And MacArthur will come back right now. Again, that's in one of those takeouts. Get him out of the game, kind of get him out of everybody's eye, and then bring him back in. Larry Johnson's been able to avoid fouls like that. And Johnson, a great rebound, but he has it knocked away by Paul Johnson. MacArthur just took another shot to the stomach. I'll tell you. <laughs> and another one. And Stacy Ogden jumps right in the middle of that, and I don't think he jumped in it as a peacemaker. The heart takes the ball to the basket and takes it around the pitch. And it, Anthony should have got called for the foul. He leaned his chest in there, and then he kicked him across the face. And I, if I'm a car, I'm going to say something, too, because that's totally uncalled for. That's a cheap shot. I'll tell you what. Greg, I've seen Greg Anthony do that for a couple of years, too. He had, I thought he had settled down this year. That was a cheap shot. Yeah, that, that's something that was totally uncalled for. Well, they've gone a little 
less than four minutes. They, last time they scored was the, the seven minutes, 15 second mark, the top 327. They're really having some trouble on the offensive end. But I think what's killing them is on the defensive end. You see the heart relentless going to the basket. There's no help out from anybody on Vegas' team. They, the best way to get in any game and to, to win it all is being great defensively. Las Vegas didn't get anything done on that end. to the heart who a costly turnover and then the heart smacks Anderson Hunt and they're going to call Anderson Hunt to travel <laughs> uh, I think the replay will show that he got a little assistance on this traveling right here you see Hunt is waiting for the ball and you can see the loose arm the right arm of character heart I don't think there's any question that Anderson got a little help on that one attention finally does again we talk about the difference in these coaches Jerry Pim is a guy whose biggest concern is whether his tan line shows on television and here's a guy who eats your laundry <laughs> well he's a competitor oh no he's really taking care of that finger man. <laughs> that's right I think he's up to the third knuckle second call. Still a little breath in Las Vegas. They've had trouble scoring it. This would really help them just to get a, a chance to get it in the basket. They haven't done that in so long. You wonder if they can do it. Bodies flying all over the place here. Jump ball call. This will go to Vegas. Good hard fall game though, Barry. That's all. Yeah, it really is. It really is. I can't help but wonder now, Trent, is will more teams just take it to Las Vegas and try to get the big men in foul trouble when it really gets down to the big dance? Well, I, yes, they, they will if they can, because that would be a, a, a wise strategy. But you've got to have a lot of different weapons to do that with Las Vegas, because they can come off the bench with Scurry. You know, they have Jones that, that sits over there, so they have a lot of people that they can do that with. What's really helped Santa Barbara, and we've said it before, is their bench play. They've gotten people to come off the bench get rebounds, and then put some of the Las Vegas players in foul trouble. And of course, Anderson Hunt having a terrible shooting night. Anderson, or rather, Anthony for three, and he got it. And Ogden not shooting it that well either. He's scoring, but he's not shooting very well. MacArthur gets it across the timeline. From behind, come the Rebels. And we got a reach-in foul on Gray. He comes up behind him and gives him a little shot. You saw how much it bothered Gary Jerry. Yeah, that's right. He didn't feel it. He didn't feel it. Didn't turn around and look, look, look at him at all. Jerry Tarkanian is selling his group. If we score, let's get up defensively. They've been able to get turnovers in the basket, and that's a good choice right here. We've got two and a half to go. Plenty of time. I'll tell you what, though, Greg Anthony's going to have to grow up. Well, he really is. I mean, Particularly if he thinks he's going to go on the next level and play. He does that. Somebody will remind him, son, that, you know, I've been doing this as long as you've been thinking about it. and Eric MacArthur in large part was responsible for the lack of scoring on the part of Johnson. He also took it to the basket against Johnson on the offensive end of things too. But there'll be another day for Larry Johnson. He'll be back. Good team defense as much as anything is what got Johnson out of the game. Good 
This is where Las Vegas gets in trouble because now they got a score with people hanging on them and they're really not going to be able to do that quite as well. You can't foul out there. Though. Idris Jones, the man who made the foul, as Anderson Hunt went for the three. And Hunt has been bagel from three point range tonight. Well, we talk about streaky shooters. Gary Tartania has got one on his hand, and Anderson Hunt, when he's good, he hit the nine the three pointers in the last game against uh, Louisville, and tonight he just can't seem to find the ball. Hunt gets the first one, and this is not quite in the bank yet. See, the thing that really hurts Vegas on, on missing free throws is sure you don't get the points, but they also like to press you, and they can't press you on a missed shot. Well, Gray just got a little payback on Greg Anthony, and that was not the cleanest of shots either. Uh, Gray is a big boy. You got to pick your spot when you're messing with people. So maybe he did notice the last time down. Well, you see, coming right here, you see Gray gets himself good position, little shoulder work. losing 
this one, I think. Got the feel he can't get a break. And then I've watched it. I've seen maybe three or four passes that should have gone out of bounds by the Gauchos that have gone, they've turned off to be baskets just by happenstance. They've made a lot of those good opportunities happen as well. Anthony for three, no. And MacArthur with a lot of finality to that one. Another jump ball, they're gonna give this one to Vegas. Got to learn. You can't put that ball over your head. You know, you're out some other place where you're taller than everybody. You can. The guard made a, a mistake there. Got to protect it. Anderson Hunt for three again. No, missed everyone. Good five. And DeHart runs it down. 49 seconds. Still plenty of time, 30 seconds. MacArthur puts it in, no basket. Foul before the shot. Listen to this play. Customers into my place of business. Question. I don't even mean to imply that. But New Mexico State is proving that they are a very good ball club. You don't get to win 22, 23 basketball games without being good, and I don't care who you play. I'll tell you what it's proving is that it's a pretty good conference. Well, it is. There, there are a lot of good teams in this conference, as well as you see there's some other teams that have got a shot, like Long Beach State, at a chance in the tournament. There's a turnover again. Jerry Tarkanian's got his coat on. He's ready to get out of here. I think Jerry Pym even took his towel. Big win for this program. No question. On national TV for Santa Barbara's win. It's a big win. Hunt, why not? Got that one. Bottom of the net. And a timeout with 13 seconds left. So I gotta say one thing, there's no dog in Las Vegas. <laughs> Definitely not an Anderson Hunt because he, he'll take a shot. <laughs> Never saw a shot he didn't like. <laughs> remind you what's coming up tomorrow on ESPN at 7.30. This was a good game tonight. This has got to be a great game tomorrow. Number one and number five playing down in Norman. The Jayhawks and the Sooners. Remember the Sooners coming off a win of then number one Missouri over the weekend. So it could be a big week for Oklahoma. Kansas, very good team though. You and I both saw them early in the year. Yeah, Kansas is a very good ball club. I, that's going to be a great game. I'm, I'm going to sit down and, and have me some popcorn to watch that with myself. And then after that, at 9.30 Eastern Time, 15th-ranked LSU plays Florida. Florida, of course, a team in the throes of many, many changes. Can't afford to miss Chris Jackson. I, I understand Florida's having that problem, but Chris Jackson is worth the price of admission. Yeah, he really is. There are just so many good underclassmen playing college basketball now. The level of the game, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but it seems like it's picked up greatly in the last two, three years. Well, I don't think there's any question about that. It's, it's gone over more like the eight or ten years. It's a different game now. It's a faster game. The athletes are bigger and stronger. And, and, and one of the reasons you got three officials is because of that.
because the kids have just gotten so much better. There's a guy with basketball on his mind. <laughs> the fans are, are cranking up to be able to run out I of think so. Eight seconds left. Anthony goes down. And it's not quite over yet. MacArthur and DeHart playing their last game before the home folk. And they made it a memorable one. 78 to 70. Just listen. for the Gauchos. They end a personal three-game losing streak to UNLV, and they end the Run and Rebels' ten-game winning streak. In addition, they move New Mexico State into a two-way tie for first place in the Big West. Both teams now at 14-2, UNLV and the Aggies as well. UC Santa Barbara now goes to 12-5. Elsewhere in the Big West, be fine. I'm standing here with a very happy coach, Jerry Pims. Santa Barbara Gauchos just beat Nevada Las Vegas 78 to 70. Jay, what does this got to do for your program? Well, it helps, obviously. And I think it'll help us get in the tournament. I think the tournament committee has to see that we can play, and it's going to come down. I think the Big West can get three teams in there, maybe even four if Long Beach can complete things. So we're just hoping that the committee will see four teams from the Big West. Well, I thought that you had a great performance overall from your team. What did you think about it? Well, we had a great defensive effort, I thought, a good board effort, and I thought the Vegas kids were a little bit tired, but we got a little tired, too. They've had an unbelievable uh, February schedule, and I think we caught them at a good time. They had to play real hard Saturday against Louisville. That was to our advantage. This crowd was to our advantage, and we got the job done. I'm really happy for our guys. Your bench was outstanding tonight. I thought Davis came in, scored some points. Akins did some things for you, rebounded. Give me a comment on that. A good bench effort. Everybody off the bench did a good job, Tony and Lucius especially, and Bobby Earps for the couple minutes. It takes eight or nine guys to win. You can't win with five. Jerry, congratulations on a great win. Good luck to you. Thank you. Barry, back to you. Okay, thanks, Quinn. And the chaos of the Thunderdome, and it was exactly the way Jerry Pym drew it up. I've never seen a game go exactly the way a coach wanted it as much as the one did tonight for Jerry Pym and the Gauchos. Right now, let's go back to John Saunders. John? Well, Barry and Quinn, Jerry Pym him can return to his boat in the harbor and relax as he has the victory, his 19th win of the season, and he's right. The tournament committee certainly has to look very hard at them. Stay with us. We'll be back with more Big Monday in a moment. At BIC, we sympathize with the ways that you pull and stretch your face in... Exactly, is this all about? It's about my being charged with kidnapping. The hearing is tomorrow, Rex, and unfortunately, I need you and your lovely wife as witnesses. I understand you've got a problem here, but I don't think I want any part.